Greetings to you, Crocodile Army. I hope the holidays are going well for you, and don't forget to bring whatever it is you're supposed to bring with you to the front lines of the war on Christmas. Fox News is always a little fuzzy about what's really necessary. I still don't think that they know that the Christmas tree is from pagan traditions, but maybe that's why somebody burned down the tree outside their studio this week in New York City. I guess they're too busy making sure that people know that Santa's supposed to be white. Because Blue-Eyed Jesus told them so. Most of us on the political left are pretty good at spotting Fox News types of political opportunists, but it can be trickier to spot when the pundits are ostensibly on our side. While I don't want to contribute more than necessary to infighting or get into making lists of people who are or are not helping the discourse, I'll give some examples of how you can spot opportunists so that you know what to look for. One of the biggest ones is people who say they're on the left while spending the bulk of their time attacking the left for not being left enough. This devolves into demagoguery very quickly, where they position themselves as the one true lefty, and everyone else is not to be trusted because they're part of the system or the establishment. It's strange that they feel the need to convince you that a shadowy cabal made of both parties is somehow necessary in our political system when individual convergent class-based interests make much more sense in explaining why Joe Manchin is more like Mitch McConnell than Ilhan Omar. This is something that the more grifty pundits have down to a science. Take a look at a list of video titles from Jimmy Dore's channel, for instance. If you didn't know who made them, you'd probably think it was a Republican and an anti-vaxxer too, which is another topic he's been leaning into in the last few months. Before they removed dislikes on YouTube videos, you could tell that his audience had become so right-wing that on the rare occasions that he would knock off conservative, his audience didn't like it, so there were more dislikes. They were there to watch him pal around with Tucker Carlson and rip the left. In order to be the one true lefty, if that's what's most important to you, you've got to knock down the other lefties with a significant following, among both pundits and politicians. These types of pundits routinely pick the furthest left congresspeople and attack them. You'll see their minions harassing progressive members of Congress on Twitter on nearly every post. Anything they do to call attention to any issue, they'll simply call performative. For instance, AOC wore a dress that said tax the rich in order to draw publicity to the message, and they called it performative as if either she doesn't really believe the message herself, or that she somehow thought that wearing the dress was literally going to make it happen by itself. I wish it actually stopped there, but it spirals even further. Saying that these lefties aren't doing enough isn't sufficient, though. No, they need to make them part of the problem. When they talk about what should be done legislatively, they convince people that the Progressive Caucus could get anything they want if they just threaten to hold up important legislation. Of course, they conveniently forget that there are a small number of representatives in a house narrowly divided between the major parties. They also forget that the role of the Senate is there as well, and I would explain this further, but I suspect most of you already know how this works, and you see, they already know too, so that's not the point of them telling you this. They want to make sure that you see them as the enemy, because they're seen as rivals for attention and accolades. So they put out a narrative that this handful of congresspeople could get anything they want done if only they wanted it enough. This was what the whole force the vote thing was about earlier this year, which you can Google on your own if you want your head to hurt. Just don't let the vortex of 4D chess enthusiasts subtract any brain cells from you. Let me also be clear about what's not necessarily a trait of the one true lefty types. When it comes to the question of voting, I have been and will continue to be vocal about electoral strategy. Remember that we have a situation where about half the country is perfectly willing to support a party and now former president who has no problem trying to end democracy and completely nullify a fair election. The prime directive is to vote to make sure that party doesn't get into power. One true lefty pundits essentially always advocate for some version of what's often referred to as burn your bust, however not all of the people who advocate for this are doing it for self-enrichment. To be clear, I think these people are going about it very wrong strategically, just like the more grifty types, but I don't think they're all doing it to grandstand or for other selfish reasons. My last bit of advice is to find content creators who accurately understand the details of politics without making everything about them. It's okay for people to channel their inner Katniss Everdeen sometimes, and be the heroes of their own stories, but don't trust people who take themselves too seriously. Good luck, and may the odds be ever in your favor.